You're listening to Saturday Morning Media. And now, back to our show. I have a lot of really cool friends who do a lot of really cool things. I wanted to make it a goal to sit down with these friends and spend about 15 minutes or so getting to know them better and find out about their past, present, and their future. The result is this show. My name is Grant Pachoco, and this is 15 Minutes With. Leslie Harmon is a church-going, sun-loving, choir-singing, (laughs) gun-toting... That's what you said. You told me to say, uh, amazing uh, voiceover artist, a, a wonderful performer, and somebody who makes me laugh very much. Leslie Harmon, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Grant, and thank you for saying I make you laugh because you always make me chortle. Oh well, let's just talk about me the entire fifteen. No, <laughs> um, let's talk about you. Where did you grow up? I grew up in uh, Central New York in a small little town uh, called Lyons, New York. Um, it's between Rochester and Syracuse, very sort of a bucolic um, setting. Mm-hmm. I uh, Although I did live in Canada for about two and a half years, uh, just outside of Montreal, when I was about 10, when the World's Fair was there, Expo 67. But for most of my life, I grew up in central New York, and that's where I went to college, mm-hmm. um, State University of New York at Oswego on Lake Ontario. And uh, did you... What was the first uh, sort of create? Because you're a very creative person. Um, were you like into creative stuff as a kid? Well, um, my mom was. Uh, I mean, I loved to sing. I loved mm-hmm. to sing ever since I was a little girl. And my mom played piano, and she introduced me to Broadway and Barbara Streisand and Judy Garland and Edie Gourmet. And so I just wanted to be a singer. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I did creatively that I remember is um, uh, <clears throat> she got me the role of the little girl in the Nutcracker when I was in kindergarten. And so I had a line. I remember she bought me this beautiful party dress. And um, my line was, see the mousy run. And um, she was very proud of me that she got me in this production. It was, you know, like a community players thing. Mm-hmm. She tried to get me to take to learn piano because she was a piano player um, uh, because she couldn't get credit with the ballet teacher. I wanted to take ballet. She couldn't, but she could get credit, meaning pay monthly with the piano teacher. I hated piano. I tried. I hated to practice. To this day, I regret not forcing myself to. Learn how to play piano because I love to sing. I tried to teach myself guitar. That didn't work either. I'm basically very lazy <laughs> and have no gumption. Uh, so, But when you were in um, high school and college and stuff, were you in the theater performances? Well, the high school that I grew up in was really, really small. And they had a chorus. And um, there was another girl, Donna Pilkington, who passed away not that long ago. She was... I, I she was my mentor even though she was the same age as me she was my mentor anyways she was singing in a rock and roll band and she got me a gig for in this rock and roll band so in high school I had a blast singing in a rock and roll cover band um we did do the choir or the school did do a production of their very first theatrical production which was Oklahoma and I um in her, I auditioned for Ado Annie. I wanted mm-hmm. to be the girl that sang, you know, I'm just the girl who can't say no. Right. And instead, I got Aunt Eller, which pissed me off <laughs> to no end. But my mother, God bless her, rest of soul, said to me, Leslie, anybody could play Ado Annie, but not everyone could do Aunt Eller. And of course, I had a blast. I've I always wanted to be the ingenue, but I always mm. ended up, you know, doing the character stuff. Um, but which you're amazing at. Well, which thank you're... you for saying that. I think at the age of 62, I've finally come to realize, <laughs> maybe I am a character actress. <laughs> um, and in college, I mean, I was a I was a theater major in college. And, you know, I'm a freshman in college, and I'm playing Joanne and company. And when I'm a sophomore, I'm playing Margot Channing in applause. So I kind of figured it out sort of but um 
But I think once I got to college, that's when I realized I really want to do musical comedy. Yeah. Really, that's that's what I love. And that was, I graduated from college in 76, so do the math. <laughs> and after you graduated, where did you, did you head to New York? I did head to New York, and I lived there for only six months uh, because a man that I had met at Oswego was doing, had a dinner theater, um, this amazing dinner theater at a, um, an inn on, um, called Springside Inn Dinner Theater, and it was on, oh God, was it Owasco or Cayuga Lake? I can't even remember. But anyways, um, and it, that was an amazing experience because there were like 18 of us, and we built the sets, we made the costumes, we performed in the show, we worked the box office. The only thing we didn't do was serve the food. Mm -hmm. But that was um, an amazing learning experience. So I did that. And after the first summer I did that, he was coming out to California to um, to live. And so I went along for the ride. And I was just going to come out and drive cross country with him. And um, this wonderful, my roommate from college, Pamela Smith, um, she was coming out to live. But I was just going to come out for a two-week visit. That was in September. And by November... I realized, and I was still paying rent on the pad in New York. I figured, you know, maybe I'll stay here. And so that's how I ended up in California. And then everything kind of went in a totally different direction. Because the guy came out, came cross country with, his name was Jeff Billings. He ended up getting a job with uh, Bob Mackey as a design assistant. And that was in 78. And they were, it was the last season of the Carol Burnett Show, and they were moving all the costumes out of CBS Television City to a storage facility down the street. And so they needed people to help move the clothes. So I, they um, assembled a ragtag group of actors and dancers and singers and comedians and writers to move these racks of clothes. And you know, I just ended up sticking around and working for EC2 costumes and Elizabeth Courtney costumes for like 30 years. Wow. So I still did, you know, I still found time to do things, but I my full-time gig was in wardrobe. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I studied at the Groundlings. I got into the Groundlings Sunday show. That's where I met Peggy Etra, who I adore, um, and a lot of other crazy people. Mm-hmm. Um, which also, I mean, I ended up at the Groundlings because the the shopper runner for Elizabeth Courtney Costumes was this hysterical guy named Howard Adler um, who just made me laugh. And so I very seriously, I said to him, how can I learn how to be as funny as you, Howard? And he said, well, man, you need to go to the Groundlings. I'd never heard of the Groundlings. So yeah. um, that... I studied at the Groundlings. That's where I met my husband. And that's, we're no longer married. Ty Harmon is a very well known casting agent. But um, because of that, because of the Groundlings and because of Howard Adler, I have my two most prized possessions my son, Sam and Jack. Yeah. Well, I, and I want to talk about them uh, kind of um, following in your footsteps uh, creatively. But I want to talk about improv really quick. What did you like about working at the Groundlings and studying improv? Um, I didn't really realize this at the time, but uh, it's kind of a spiritual thing for me, mm -hmm. as wacky as that sounds. I mean, the main thing, you know, going to the shows, seeing people like Tim Stack and Lynn Stewart and Phil Hartman... Um, Mindy Sterling, you know, just being blown away by their talent. They made it look so fun and so easy. And it's like, oh, my God, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And their tagline, you know, was, have you ever wanted to make it up as you went along? But there's so much training that goes into doing that. But improv scares the crap out of me. Um, I like the freedom of not having to worry about sticking with the script Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I mean, f I love being on stage with other people that are creative and fun-loving, but I love the principles of it. You say yes to whatever is 
presented to you. You live in the moment. Um, and the hardest thing for me about improv is letting it go once it's done. <laughs> Usually for me, it's, you know, not dwelling on, oh my God, I was such an idiot in that scene. I broke all the rules. I wasn't funny. But then at this, by the same token, it's these many pieces of brilliance that come and they're gone. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I love about it. Yeah. Um, well, and, uh, you know, you, you said you worked um, for the costuming thing for 30 years. And then when did you, because currently you're working at Warner Brothers. When did you make the jump over to the Warner Brothers costume? Um, about 10 years ago. It was mm -hmm. uh, 11 years ago, July 5th. How funny is that? July 5th, 2005, <laughs> I started working um, in the Warner Brothers costume department. And uh, that was a huge eye-opening experience for me because before I'd been in this very creative, small environment and then all of a sudden I end up in a corporate environment. The Warner Brothers costume department is probably the least corporate department on the lot, but um, it's still a corporation with rules of what's appropriate and not appropriate. And um, basically I work in a Costco of costumes. Mm -hmm. they're, it's just they're not new costumes. They're old, uh, gently used background wardrobe pieces. Um, and it's a huge facility. It's uh, mind-boggling. Is there any, uh, would you say there's any creativity in your job in, in working? Um, like whether it's putting costume pieces together or? There's very little of that, really, mm -hmm. because I'm the stock supervisor in the department. So I have to make sure that uh, things get back to where they belong. Most of the people that come in there know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, the designers come in or they send their assistants or stylists come in and they know what they want. But occasionally there'll be somebody that's trying to put a look together and they have an idea of what they want. We don't have what they want, but we can sort of say to them, you know, I'm just thinking, what if you went down this aisle and maybe there might be something that'll jump out at you there? Um, but it's uh, it's more of a situation where I'm guiding people to what they need or want. Um, but occasionally it is, you do get the opportunity to be creative. Yeah. And uh, recently you have been um, getting into voiceover work. Yeah. I mean, you had done some voiceover stuff before, but uh, like really seriously getting into yeah. it. So what, what kind of spurred that on? Well, two of the people that I work with in the wardrobe department, one of them, Mari Helgeson, um, had always been told, you have a great voice. You should do voiceover. Nobody ever said that to me. <laughs> but I always was kind of fascinated by that world. So we took this intro to voiceover class, three-hour class with MJ Lalo, creatingvoices.com, and um, loved it. Mm -hmm. And so just started taking more and more classes. She would bring in guest directors. Um, and the more I did it, the more I realized how it's not just about reading a script. It's a lot of it is improv and acting. There's a huge element of being a great actor that goes into being a good voiceover person. And I knew about Tress McNeil. She was a Groundlings alumni who does tons of voices on The Simpsons. And that just sounded so entertaining to me. You don't have to worry about what you look like. <laughs> You know, what you smell like. Well, no, you do need to be politically You correct. smell very nice Thank uh, you. today here. Uh, yeah, you can't wear perfume in the booth. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, I just fell in love with it. So I decided, okay, what the heck, I'm going to make a demo. Um, and then I, one of the guest directors that MJ had brought in was this wonderful um, voiceover agent by the name of Mike O'Dell. He's with BBA. And I sent him my demo and he signed me. He signed me back um, on April Fools of this year. And uh, he's been submitting me for things. I haven't booked anything yet, but um, you know, I have a little home studio because everything has to, you know, you have to do an MP, he sends me the script. I have to make an MP3, send it off to him. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
I'm kind of looking forward to that as being my my second act after I retire. Um, I'm hoping I can do it. And if not, I love taking classes. That's something I realize. I think when I used to take classes with you at Improvatorium, Patrick Bristow's amazing uh, school of improv, um, sometimes I like just doing the classes better than the actual performances. Performing, yeah. I love taking class, whether it's voiceover acting um, or improv. And um, another thing I want to ask about, because this is something that is creative, and we mentioned in the beginning, is you sing a lot in church as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? And about I, um, a long time ago, uh, two things come to mind. Uh, when you sing, you pray twice. And... Um, <laughs> Somebody gave me this little plaque, um, God respects me when I work, but he loves me when I sing. So I love to sing. I sing in my little church choir. We're a, a small band of, of misfits. We are. Um, we have this amazing choir director, Dr. Stephen Cronauer, and we go. Uh, I sing at the American Lutheran Church right here in Burbank on Clark and Hollywood Way, and um, it feeds my soul. I love going to church. I love the ritual of the liturgy, and I I get a lot out of singing in choir. Um, it's it's something I love to do. Plus, it's great, you know, trying to sight read music. It's I'm hoping it's keeping my brain active. Um, Who are you, and why am I here? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, my um, church life is very important to me. Yeah. And um, well, we mentioned them before, your two sons, yeah. Sam and Jack. They are uh, very musical as well, yeah. um, both of them. Um, and uh, uh, Sam is even in a band uh, following in, because uh, it was a high school band, right? Isn't that how yeah. Legal, Tenant start, yeah. Legal Tender yeah. started? Sorry, yeah. I mispronounced it there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so talk about um, your kids' creativity. Sam's a bass player. He's always loved music. And his dad, probably more so than me, uh, his dad's really smart when it comes to all genres of music. And so Sam was um, exposed to all kinds of music from a young age. So he's uh, heavy metal is his main love, but he's in a cover band called Hi-Fi Academy. They're currently playing up in... Um, Big Bear, um, he's also he just did a, a gig at the Federal with a '80s band called Rubik's Cube, um, but he loves music. I mean, music is Sam's uh, passion. Jack is an amazing singer, and he was in when he was in high school. He was in Powerhouse, the show choir at John Burroughs High, and they went to nationals in Chicago, and they won. That was in 2012, number one show choir in the country. Um, he's currently not singing now. He's away at college at a small uh, liberal arts college. He did sing when he was a freshman, and he with the choir there and got to go to Italy over spring break and sing in all these amazing churches. Um, but, yeah, my kids are the light of my life, and now that they're almost 21 and 23, Mommy's got to back off a little bit. <laughs> she can't be their best friend anymore. So, um, but they bring me so much joy, and I'm so proud of them, and I can't wait to see where they go with their lives. Well, and I, I think, like, whenever I go past your house, if your boys <laughs> are there and you are there, there's a lot of fun in that house. There's yeah. a lot of laughing and a lot of uh, goofing around and yeah. uh, zaniness, and it's a lot of fun. I um the first day that Jack was home from school, I get home from work and I see that my neighbors are all outside and they're looking up and I'm thinking, <laughs> uh oh, what's going on? And I look up and my sons have lawn chairs on the roof and they're drinking beer because it's Jack's first. I probably shouldn't say that. I'm sure it's against the law in some part of this city. But yeah, they they and they've always go, when they were little, they didn't take beer up, but they've always gone up on the roof usually with their Nerf guns to shoot at people walking by. <laughs> um, but I, I love it when I get these little texts from you 
and I'm at work and you're commenting on something that's going on at my house that I don't know about. Right, I'm driving past. Hey, there's a <laughs> ping pong table in the front yard or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Leslie Harmon, it has been a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you so much for coming by the show today. I'm honored to be in your presence, Grandpa Choco. I adore you, so thank you very much. Thank you. Leslie Harmon is one of my absolute favorite people, and it was such a pleasure to get to talk to her for this episode. 15 Minutes With on the Grantcast is a production of Saturday Morning Media, and it's made possible by the Saturday Morning Media Patreon patrons who've gone to patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up a monthly donation for as little as a dollar a month. Huge thanks to Shay Stewart, Merle Lafferty, Jeff Peterson, Dale Gadania, Steven Staver, Jackie Klimo, Melissa Crawford, Chuck, Matthew Wayne Selznick, Dave Slusher of the Evil Genius Chronicles, Mike Coughlin, Dorothy Pachoco, John D., Kathy Crawford, Brian Greer, Carrie Whitney, Chuck Tomasi, Chris Foster, Stephen Ng, Clinton of ComedyForecast.com, Vicky DeVries, Mike Wabshaw, Twitter user Butts and Gear, also known as Wildcat, Eve Cunning, Mike Hamilton, and Gaston Morineau. If you'd like to support this show and the other fun content from Saturday Morning Media, become a patron. Head on over to P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up your donation today. You can also tell a friend about the show or leave the show a review on iTunes. If you have feedback for the show, you can send it to me directly at grant at throwingtoasters.com or get in touch via Twitter where my username is Toasterboy. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will talk to you next time. The Grant Cast is copyright 2016 Saturday Morning Media, Grant Pachoco, Executive Producer, all rights reserved. www.saturdaymorningmedia.com Elf Centered is a monthly, completely improvised broadcast from Santa's Village. Join elves Gavin, Beatrice, and Gary as they talk about the latest goings-on from the North Pole. He has a pass to the radio station. I know, but he's got to go through the security check. Well, he'll be fine. Okay. You know Gary, (laughs) drop of a hat, he'll strip down to his jingle shoes. That's what we're worried about. Oh. He's been red-nosed. Really? Yes, he has. He has. Oh, no. Subscribe to Elf Centered. Visit elfcenteredshow.com today. You've been listening to Saturday Morning Media. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.